Well, this amazing thing is called a flip dot display. It's uh, pretty obsolete at this point. I don't think anyone's making them anymore, but you can still find them on eBay if you're lucky. And it is an electromechanical display device here. So I'm going to turn it on the edge so you can get a glimpse there. And you can see there's magnetic coils. Every dot has its own little electromagnet. And that electromagnet causes a little flap on the front to flip back and forth because there's a tiny little magnet mounted on it. One side's yellow, one side is black. Right now I've got it running some test patterns here. But I thought I would do a short little video series about how this thing works and how I built a little controller for it. As you can see on the back here. There's an Arduino Nano right there that's running the whole show. I'm running my test patterns at this point. And a couple of circuit boards and uh, all powered from a 24 volt power supply. And so let's go see if we can figure out how this thing works. Okay, now we're back at the bench and I've taken the panel and removed the controller from the back there so you can see how it came to me. These things are laid out in a matrix and on this board I've got 16 rows and 30 columns. And what they do is they wire a common connection on every column that comes up to this connector here that I mark with a C and there's a common connection on every row and that comes up to this connector marked with an R. Uh, on the original, uh, these were intended to be used in a, uh, in a setup where you had multiples of the board and so there'd be a pair of connectors, big ribbon cables that came off every board and it went all back to one big controller that had a whole bunch of, uh, of uh, connectors on it and it would run the whole show. Now these were made by a company called Anax, A-N-N-A-X, and that's a German company that makes uh, makes all kinds of things for mass transit, so it's not surprising that they would make these. Uh, it looks like they're, they're no longer mentioned on their website, and I'm not surprised about that. Uh, even in the older product section, I don't see a mention of them. I was able to find out that that, that company name came about uh, from a merger in the early 90s, so it must have been manufactured at some point after that. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if by the early 2000s they had stopped making these things altogether. Um, you can see on the front here there's some there's a pair of ICs and then on the back I've got some small surface mount ICs and a bunch of other components there's a voltage regulator there and some other miscellaneous stuff traced it all out and it turns out that has to do with the LEDs on here there's actually also an LED under each dot you can see it there if I flip it up little guy little green guy uh, and I think the way this worked is the LEDs were always lit all the time and the circuitry up here is about uh, multiplexing them so that you could energize them I guess one row at a time. Uh, when, the, when the dot would be open you could see the LED and then when the, when the flap is closed you don't see anything. So I just assumed that they were, they were lit all the time. I'm not worrying about the LEDs. A uh, big panel of LEDs is not that interesting. Uh, but a big panel of flip dots sure is. So I'm just worried about how to drive the flip dots. So they they bring out the lines for those LEDs to some of the uh, the pins on this connector here. I want to make sure I'm not going to touch those when I start probing this with the power supply. So I covered that over with a little black tape. Now I lied a little bit in my description just now. It's a slightly more complicated than just a matrix, but I've got a schematic diagram here. And as far as I know, this is how all flip dot panels are wired up. Uh, if you just had a matrix with uh, a column line going to every coil and a single row line going to every coil and didn't have these extra diodes in here. What would happen is if you try to energize just one by say putting a positive voltage over here and a negative voltage over on the row, you'd certainly energize that coil but what happens is there would also be a path for that current to flow through pretty much every other coil as well. Uh, and so that just wouldn't work out at all. If you want to be able to individually address the coils, and of course we do, uh, you have to be able to steer the current just to one coil at a time. So that's what the diodes do. So uh, on this board, if I want to flip a dot from black to yellow, I need to put positive over here on the row high line and negative up here on the appropriate column line. And what happens is the current can flow down the line through this top diode through the coil and then back out here. And if you try to trace out any other path, you'll find out that you can get down through here, but you really can't do anything with that. You can't go back 
up because the diodes are pointing in the wrong direction here. So you can energize just, just one coil at a time. And if I want to flip it in the other direction, what I've got to do is put a positive on the column line here and then a negative voltage down on the row. There'd be no voltage up there anymore. And you can see that the current can flow down here through the coil, through the lower diode, out that way, and there's no way it's gonna be able to flow up through any of the other diodes here. So it turns out you have two lines for every row. So since I've got 16 rows, there's 32 lines, 16 high lines and 16 low lines, and still just one line for every column. So I've got 30 column lines. And so they use these 40 pin connectors up here. And the first 30 over here on the column connector, is that the, yes it is. On the column connector, uh, there's one each for each column. And over here on the row connector, there's a high line and a low line for each one. The extra pins, I think, on this guy don't go anywhere at all. The extra pins on this guy go to these ICs to drive the LEDs. So now let's, let's try flipping some dots here. So I'm gonna use a bench power supply here. I've got, I'll show you here, I've got it set up for 24 volts and I've also got a current limit on there. If you're just experimenting with one of these boards, you want to you limit your current so you don't inadvertently smoke out one of your coils here. So I'm going to short the supply and you can see it's limiting to about 200 milliamps. That's plenty enough to flip the coils but not enough to cause any trouble here. So let's put you down there. Let's see if I can get myself on a stool here and we will flip some dots. So if I want to go from black to yellow, I've got to put positive on the row line and negative on the column line. So let's do an easy one. We'll do the one way over here in this corner. So that's first row. So positive on the row one high line, negative on, boom. All it just takes is a quick tap and it flips right over. So now let's flip it back the other way. So I'm just going to swap the probes. I'm going to put the negative on that pin and positive over here. And whoops. Whoop. Oh, come on. What's going on? Oh, oh, I got to put, I've got to put negative on the low line. That's right. Like I just explained, there's two different lines on the row side. You got, you want to put the positive, you got to go in the top row. For the negative, you got to go in the bottom row here. So now let's see what we can do if we want to flip a whole bunch at once. So I'm going to pick a random line over here and doom. So I got every other pixel flipped because I ran along the top of the connector here. If I go along the bottom, I'll get all the rest. So that's a lot of fun. Now you notice I don't ha it doesn't take very long to flip the dot. You normally only need to energize this for a period of... Uh, uh, I, I've experimented with this and, and microseconds is enough. Oops, if I want to turn those guys off again. Let's see, that's one, two, three. So I need to be there. Boom. And one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Doop. What's going on? Let's see. There we go. So I just think I wasn't making good good contact there. So I've got them back off. Uh, so driving this thing is a matter then of just energizing the right row and the right column at the right time for the right length of time and then letting everything go. Uh, these boards have a nifty property where once you flip them, the, the core of the electromagnet inside is magnetized in that direction and it stays magnetized. So if I try to flip over, uh, grab a pencil here. Let's see, if I try to flip over one of these little guys from black to yellow and let it go, it flips right back. That's because the pole piece inside the coil uh, is, is magnetized in that direction. So if I come over here and energize one, or several, if I try to flip that same pixel now from yellow to black, it's going to go right back to yellow because we've magnetized the pole piece in the opposite direction. So you can, uh, if you're on a, this is on the side of a bus, you've got your route number sitting there and you're bumping along, you can shake it, nothing's going to, nothing's going to uh, cause it to flip. 
and it doesn't take any energy. So once you've, once you've flipped your, your route number or whatever other information you want to show on the sign, you don't need any more power for it. Uh, so making a controller for this is just a matter of energizing a row with positive and a column with negative, or energizing a row with negative and a column with positive, uh, or most of the time not energizing anything with anything. Now these boards are intended to be used uh, in multiples here. You don't have just a single one of these, you actually have several. And I happen to have a second one right here, like that. And the reason I have that is that my friend John was the sharp-eyed guy who found this auction on eBay and he bought this one over here on the right. And after he got that I saw that and said, well I want one of those. So I, I went to the same seller and got one, the one over here on the left. And so, of course, in designing a controller for this, I wanted to make sure that I would be able to chain together as many of these boards as I could find and drive them all from one common controller. Now, one interesting feature of these is that these boards actually come in different sizes. If you'll notice, the first board I was using there has 30 columns. The second board only has 25. They came in 16 by 30 and 16 by 25. And uh, by browsing around a little bit online, it looks like they also came in a 16 by 20 size. Now why they did that, I'm not sure, but the, the full system that the eBay seller had for sale is 110 columns total, which they get by using two boards of 30 and two boards of 25, and one controller uh, that you would wire up to all eight um, uh, IDC connectors here. Why 110 instead of just use four boards of 30 and make it 120? I don't know. Maybe there was some particular amount of space they had to fill, you know, whatever whatever the amount of space they had on the side of a train or the side of a bus, whatever it is, I don't know. Uh, but these do come in different sizes, and so that uh, presents some challenges here because I want the controller to be able to figure out uh, what size board it's attached to. I don't want to have to have configuration jumpers or something like that or... Uh, certainly not have to have to reconfigure the software and reflash it every time I want to move it from one one panel to another. Uh, but fortunately, uh, with either 25 or 30, and if I'm going to use 8-bit shift registers, uh, it's the same number of shift registers in either case. 20, 25 is one too many to have only three shift registers. You have to have the fourth. Once you've got the fourth shift register, you can go as high as 32. So it's not uh, shouldn't be a big problem to to make a controller that can work with anything here. And of course, uh, my friend has been kind enough to let me experiment on his board while I'm designing all this, and, and when it's all done, he'll get to give, of course, I'll give him a, a, a copy of the board, because I've got quite a few copies at this point. And uh, he can uh, turn this into whatever project he wants to make out of that.